Carmen, it is such a pleasure for me to be here with you today. Oh. Uh, I reflect back when I was a 19-year-old graduate student. I hate to tell you, 43 years ago, I came to you. Uh, you brought me to UCLA, Department of Anatomy, Brain Research Institute, and changed my life. I, there was no one I, I would uh, uh, trust at that time but you in terms of setting me on a path of being able to understand my passion. I've done some other things, but at, at my heart, I've always been with you in the Brains, Brain Research Institute. <laughs> well, that's a lovely thing for a professor to hear. Uh, uh, our objective here is to uh, 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 get bright young people and develop them into scientists, and that's exactly what you did. You were developed... Uh, at UCLA, and you took uh, a doctoral degree here with a very fine uh, professor who was your your uh, uh, principal professor. And uh, I recall your uh, stay with us uh, very well, Bob, and uh, I'm so pleased that we were able to have the environment for you to get your degree. Well, I've uh, I, I've had a passion for the understanding of uh, what we are as human beings, what the nature is of the human existence in this incredible cosmos that we yeah. find ourselves. Uh, this has been a, a passion, almost an obsession I've had my whole life. Uh, uh, you gave me the tools to think about it, how best to use the scientific method to explore and so now I want to reflect back, and I want to go back, and I want to ask some of these fundamental questions, and I can't Please. think of anybody I'd rather begin with than you. And yeah. I, I want to start with what, what we have to know, even know, which is our brains. Right. How would you, as a famous professor of anatomy, describe a brain? What yeah. is a brain? Well, the brain is... Uh, a, an organ that lies within the skull. Uh, it is uh, anywhere between uh, 12 and 1,500 grams. About uh, three pounds? About, yes, about, about three pounds. Uh, uh, it contains uh, all of the learning that we have achieved uh, in, our, in our life. Uh, it has all of the controls of our muscles, it receives all of the information from our environment by way of its sensory input. It has the analytic aspect to take that information and transform it into whether or not an action is required. Sometimes an action is not required. Sometimes it's best not to respond. Sometimes it's best not to act. But the nervous system makes these, these uh, uh, decisions. And... Uh, different regions of the brain are responsible for different functions. For example, the more uh, complex and human aspects of our nervous systems are pretty much in the frontal lobes. This is where uh, it is thought that uh, that we have our, uh, our humanistic uh, characteristics, our ability to think, uh, our ability to inhibit our action and to reflect on uh, uh, on the situation. But uh, the nervous system uh, is, without a question, uh, the most uh, fascinating part of the human body. There's a brain, a spinal cord that's connected to it, lower portion of the brain. There is a, a series of 31 nerves off the spinal cord, and a series of 12 cranial nerves directly off the brain. And this is what controls our lives, uh, both with regard to uh, how we feel and how we act. How can we begin to understand this three-pound matter, which, which many have called the most complex form of matter in the universe, yes. as far as we know? Uh, how can we begin to, to shape it? What are the, the different components, the different major parts of it, so we can begin to understand a little bit of how it works? Well, brain scientists have asked this question for centuries. and uh, But I must say that in the last hundred years, there have been enormous strides in understanding which regions of the brain 
uh, uh, perform which acts. For example, uh, uh, there are areas that uh, are the control of our of our motor behavior. There are other areas uh, where uh, we perceive uh, uh, input from uh, 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 from various parts of the body. So what scientists have done is to ask specific questions, both uh, uh, to human beings and to uh, animal uh, animal experimentation, where uh, uh, the questions that are asked uh, are focused on a specific area of the brain for the most part. Now we know that the spinal cord contains, for example, all of the pathways that lead from the periphery to the brain and all of the pathways that lead from the brain out to the periphery. But that is the body below the neck. Uh, the head and neck are controlled by cranial nerves and these are nerves that come off of the brain itself. So uh, the brain is a, a, an absolutely incredible organ uh, which... Uh, uh, Bit by bit, scientists are getting to understand more and more about it. Of course, there are new techniques that have allowed us to uh, uh, get answers to questions that we weren't able to uh, understand uh, uh, even as many as 15 or 20 years ago. So there's been a gradual evolve, evolving uh, science of, uh, we, we, as a result of brain research. UCLA has been one of the leaders in uh, in uh, this type of research. Uh, from the very beginning of this school, we've had uh, uh, neuroanatomists and neurophysiologists and neuropharmacologists and behaviorists. And uh, the, the person that uh, put all of this together uh, initially was a very famous professor who... Uh, was responsible for understanding of where in the brain the neural tissue controls what we call consciousness and wakefulness. The uh, person was Horace W. Magoon, a professor that was recruited from Northwestern University. And, uh, and he made a, a seminal uh, discovery in the uh, mid-1940s, published in 1948, uh, and uh, they uh, were able to pinpoint where in the brain uh, stimulation of that region awakened us from sleep. And they created uh, the anatomic nature of uh, what is called the activating system of the cerebral cortex. They're able to activate the cortex from a sleeping state to a waking state. It's really quite a remarkable discovery because... Uh, consciousness uh, was only uh, uh, discussed by metaphysicians and by uh, 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 psychologists before neuroanatomists and neurophysiologists found where in the brain we had this the uh, the structure of uh, of, of uh, pathways that was responsible for for wakefulness and for consciousness. So, um, yeah, there was uh, an awful lot uh, understood uh, in the area of, uh, of consciousness and wakefulness. And so one of the things I did uh, during my period here was to concentrate on the opposite uh, function, namely the brain mechanisms responsible for the onset of sleep. Mm. And uh, we've had... Uh, a number of students who are still active, actually, uh, who uh, joined my group and uh, who made, I think, uh, very significant uh, contributions to understanding uh, the onset of sleep. One of the ways that scientists have discovered brain function in the early days was through uh, injury. When yes. areas of the brain were traumatized through stroke or gunshot wound, uh, and then doing it deliberately in animal experiments yes. where certain areas would be destroyed and seeing what the, what the results are. Right. Exactly. That, uh, that is the scientific method that has been used, uh, both by observation of the human condition and by establishing uh, 
uh, questions uh, which uh, involve the use of animals. Now, I, I must emphasize that uh, uh, animals have taught us so much about uh, uh, about uh, uh, medicine and about uh, uh, and about the brain and behavior. But please understand that scientists have taken every precaution in uh, making certain that there was no pain in the use of any sure. animal. I mean, that is a, a principle that has uh, really uh, never been violated. And if it ever was violated, uh, the persons were restricted from doing brain research again. Mm. So, uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. Observation of injuries to the human brain and the questions that were asked of animals. And incidentally, animals from low forms on up through uh, uh, through primates uh, and uh, monkeys and uh, uh, even higher animals.